Hi, Hannah here. I am joined on the Zoom by Martha Howe Douglas. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Actress, writer and one sixth of the writing team behind one of our favourite things on the telly, Ghosts, which is back, not as we're speaking now, but it will be when people listen to this, they will have had the opportunity to watch the first episode. Now, we had Lawrence Rickard on the podcast back in November and he was talking about writing ghosts. Yeah. And then I spoke to Katie Wicks about her book back in the spring. And as we spoke on the Friday, filming was going to start on the Monday. And now I'm talking to you when it's out. It's and out. <laughs> I wondered what part of those three bits of the process are actually the most satisfying? Is it the creating? Is it the making? Or is it sitting back and watching it go out into the world? A hard question. I think it's all of it. I, I enjoy the process so much. We've all worked together for such a long time now that that kind of creating of the series is 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 such a fun element and exciting to explore different stories and and backstories and all the things that the the fans seem to love about learning more about the ghosts as we're now into series three. We can delve a little bit deeper. So that that process I love and I write with Larry and he's just a brilliant brilliant writer I learned so much from him that's the six of us sitting down in a room and and you know bashing out stories is always fun I mean with the, with actually this series we wrote completely in lockdown mm. so we wrote all of Zoom. so we missed that being in the room together element but I'm a performer I, I went to drama school that's what I love to do but the writing has been something that I've done since, you know, we've all worked together. And I do really enjoy it. But the performing is, is my is my bag. And then obviously, you know, people enjoying it, sitting at home and enjoying it is, is so, so satisfying. And the feedback that we get is just so lovely. And so kind of broad, you know, people talk about watching this show with their kids, their parents, their grandparents. Mm. And to strike a, a, you know, a chord across... All those, all those age groups is so satisfying for us. It's, it makes us very happy. It's incredibly impressive achievement in that sense that it is something that I can watch with my nephew, my mum, you know, yeah. across three generations and everybody be laughing right. at it. Obviously, you've just mentioned this is your COVID series of ghosts. <laughs> I mean, I hope it's the only COVID series of ghosts. <laughs> I, I really hope that we, we don't go back there. How different was it? Did Did you find yourself getting into the swing of the difference quite quickly or did it always feel slightly alien to be writing yeah. separately, but also filming and presumably writing in a way that you couldn't, you had to have in mind how many people you might be able to have in a room at any one time? Absolutely did have to have that in mind yeah I mean Larry and I we live quite far apart so you know back in the days when people used Skype do you remember Skype um, we, used to write, <laughs> we used to write on Skype and now it's Zoom but yeah that was kind of everybody was in the same situation everybody was you know seeing people on screen whether it was you were doing quizzes at home or you were working from home so yeah it was weird but we kind of we were so determined that we wanted to do it and and we wanted to be able to film it and you know that we kind of just pushed on filming was was odd yeah we were tested every day and we were masked up until you know we started filming so rehearsals you were in a mask or rather Larry and I weren't in masks because of our prosthetic makeup mm -hmm. we had to have big visors on which were actually I think better than having the masks on but yeah so we were we were very aware that we couldn't sort of hang out in the same way that we that we would be able to normally we had what's called cohorts so when we when you were in a scene with somebody the, the production team tried to do it so that if you were in a scene with those people you'd be with them all week right so you'd you'd finish those scenes together and then you'd move on to a different cohort so that was odd because we were kept apart mm. <laughs> like, like we we're all diseased like you you get stay away from them you can't talk to them but yeah we got through it we only had one covid illness and that was our covid supervisor <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why i'm laughing but <laughs> <laughs> so, but actually to get through 10 weeks like we did the, the the one blessing i think was that the nation was still in lockdown when we were filming so nobody could go out on the weekends and, and get anything uh, nasty. So 
nothing was brought back and I think that was our saving grace I really do but we got through it and I think I think the crew and everybody they were so dedicated to making it to the finish line that everybody really respected the rules of the sanitizing and the testing and the masks and you know everybody had had the kind of the goal mm. in their mind and 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 luckily we got through it and that's what we're about to see on tv yeah the BBC have sent me the first three episodes and it's oh, just yeah it's just delightful to have it back oh, on the telly although the only problem with watching it in previews is then I don't get to watch it with somebody else quite yeah. I, mean, I mean I probably will do that anyway can we talk about Fanny Button while I have you of course <laughs> Firstly, I need to know whose idea that name was because it took me about, I would say, about three episodes before I thought, oh, shit, that's Fanny Button. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God, I actually don't know whose uh, idea it was completely, but it it comes out of this sort of spawning of of, uh, ideas that we have in a a room together. And I think that that's the most productive way, really, because there's six brains on on everything and so we get we we get through stuff quite quickly opposed to somebody just writing a script on their own you've got all these other brains working together with you so it's so helpful but yeah they we'd, we'd obviously thought of button house we'd got button house and then we were talking about the characters for and yeah fanny button came out of i mean our conversations can go quite blue uh <laughs> quite quickly actually so i mean it's no surprise but yeah i i get tweets about that like is is that what it is and i'm like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> It, do you think that's what it is? But we did uh, we did have to have a little bit of a Fanny reference check and, and, and rein in the reference check um, in the series because you're only allowed so many Fanny references uh, mm. <laughs> per episode. <laughs> so we just like rein them in. They can't come thick and fast actually when we're writing. So yeah, you do have to be mindful of that so that you're not you know not taking the piss with the with the uh, Fanny references too much. Yeah. Obviously, you are the only regular woman in the in the team. Yeah. Does that mean that you got your pick of which women you wanted to play, or was it always Fanny for you? Oh, in the in Ghost, in Ghost, yeah, yeah. I, well, yes. I mean, I did get my pick, but I because I'd just come from Yonderland, the show that we did on Sky together. I was sort of the Alison character in Yonderland. I was the sort of the woman that bended off the idiots. So to go from that sort of straight character, I really wanted something more extreme and and (laughs) Fanny has become way extreme. I mean, yeah, she's definitely crossing a line now of extreme, but but she's so fun to play. I just love playing her. And I think it was the natural, the natural character for me to gravitate to for sure. But I'm so glad I did because I I love, I love her. She's become I was wondering this when I watched it. I actually find her more tolerable, which Do makes you? me wonder whether you're doing that deliberately or I've just no. become accustomed to her. No, I'm really not. I'm actually a bit aware that people aren't that that big a fan of her because she's so annoying. But but that's so fun, you know. I play I play that, and I you know. I, I, but I I do think there's more love for her now than in the first series for sure but she's kind of gone ridiculous I have to say I, I do have to keep in check my gurning because I'm like sometimes my faces are just stupid but yeah it, it's just fun but yeah I mean I'm glad you're I'm glad you're fighting her for tolerable I'm glad I was thinking Thank your you. face must hurt after that yeah. after some of the extraordinary <laughs> positions you just have to hold it in for such a long time it really does my neck sometimes I'm like oh god but what, what the, the uh, our makeup lady lovely Linda who does my uh, aesthetics for me when I was doing the first and second series I had a piece on my forehead you know sort of more wrinkles uh, eye bags uh, like big old eye bags and then I had these jowls <laughs> and it takes so long to do the makeup mine and Larry's for Robin it's just so, it's so long and Linda said to me last year she went, I think we could do away with the, the jowls she said, because you kind of create your own chin <laughs> 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 But she's right, I do. So, and actually it saved us a good 40 minutes of makeup, so I'll take that, to be honest. But yeah, I, I mean, yeah, you do. there's a lot of face gymnastics involved, yeah. Now, you've always, because obviously you, with Horrible Histories and with Bill, you are, yeah. find yourself in a lot of the unpleasant corsetry <laughs> that women were forced into in those days. Is that still a pleasure for you or is that a, a real a, like, is- physical pain? No, it's not a pleasure. It's, uh, I mean, it's definitely 
it really helps you with your physicality mm. for sure you know the, the the sort of structured element of that dress and it's a corset and then a, a various uh, amount of underskirts and then this this dress but um i wouldn't i wouldn't go without the corset because it's um i think it's really important for the for the the physicality of the character but no it's not pleasant at all especially when you've had a year off and then you come back and they they pull you into that on the first morning you're like oh god 10 weeks of this you just don't eat that much uh in the day you eat when you when you uh, get home yeah <laughs> i mean it looks horrific to to, uh, to to me to be wearing something like that talking about picking roles then i do have a question with bill obviously you had the late great Helen McCrory was your Queen Elizabeth the First. Was that an active decision that you were going to give it to her, or or how did that yeah. come about? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I I loved playing Queen Elizabeth the First, but I think for for the for the purpose of a film, it was great to have somebody you know known come in and play that iconic role. And I loved I loved playing, and so yeah, I was I was more than happy. And and Helen, Helen was just exquisite really she was she was well she was an amazing actress we all know that but coming in and giving her spin on that that mm. character it, and it was so off the wall weird sometimes that you were like what the? but it just worked so brilliantly and I think only only she could have done that because it's been so done that character that she just came and bought this fresh spin on it um, and it was perfect yeah I, actually I think it that, that's like a prime example of of why comedy is not really considered to be great acting. Yeah. Because, you know, if you look back at Helen McCrory's roles, I'd say that's actually quite high up of one of her genuinely, like, really brilliant ones. But because it's comedy, people never think of that. They always want to, they want something that's all about the sort of the angst and the drama. That's right. <laughs> There's been a lot of comparisons between what you do, the horrible... I don't like calling you the horrible histories, guys, because that's not right. But you don't really have an effective name together, do you? Our fans on, on Twitter and stuff, they call us the idiots, which we'll take. Um, but no, <laughs> talk about this. Can, can you come up with a, a, you know, a group name? And it kind of feels... It feels like it, it's a bit naff now. You know, we are what, what people know us yeah. for. and. Yeah, of course we've moved on from horrible histories, but I don't think we'll ever get away from that's where we began. I mean, yeah. we're all in our 40s now. So, I mean, it's a bit weird, but you know, listen, that's what brought us together. And I had such fun memories of those days. We all do, we still talk about them now. And it, uh, yeah, it was the beginning of us. So it's totally understandable. And because it's repeated all the time, mm. even kids that grew up with us who have now got mortgages and babies, yeah. new kids coming. So I think, I, th I don't think we'll ever get away from it entirely. <laughs> You quite often get compared to Monty Python. Yeah. I think for you know for a, for a number of reasons, not least that you all play a lot of roles in stuff, and also it's a similar style of humour. But I also think quite often you guys remind me of the stuff you do reminds me of the League of Gentlemen. Also because you do the dressing up of the mini roles, but because I've seen like both some of you guys and some of the League of Gentlemen guys talking about where their comedic inspiration came from. And with them, it's not always something that was meant to be funny. And I remember reading Jim Howick saying that one of the inspirations for Ghosts was the Danny Dyer episode of Who Do You Think You Are? <laughs> which was genuinely one of the most unexpectedly hilarious things ever on television. Yeah. So I just wondered, what is it that makes you laugh? What do you, where do you get your inspiration from? I love rubbish TV, like rubbish. Do you, do you remember that um, series, The Hotel? Did you remember that on Channel 4? It was like a fly on the wall documentary. So no. it was a, like the real office. Oh, okay. I'm a big observer. And and I, I think that's that's a, it's quite a good steer is that it's not necessarily about what's boom, boom, hilarious in front of you. I like to observe sort of quirks in people. And I, yeah, the, I can find humour in, in strange places like that. But there was a guy in that who was called Mark. I think he was the, the manager. God, he was great. And I just loved that show. It wasn't supposed to be funny. Yeah. But that was one of our touchstones, actually, when I was talking, when we were talking about ghosts, what I was saying was, what about something like that? You know, that sort of, it's not supposed to be funny, but it's funny because, you you know, you've got those characters. But, yeah, I, I mean, growing up, I used to watch, you know, French and Saunders, Victoria Ward, all of those. They, they were my kind of idols. Uh, and I watched that with my mom, which is so nice now that we're, you know, we've created a show that that kids are watching with their parents because that's what I remember when I was young, you know, being able to sit down as a family and watch things that we all found funny. 
yeah, I mean, the league, I just think, is so brilliant. And we have got this kind of connection of, across the board. Mm. Lots of the boards have been in, inside number nine and stuff. And they're very complimentary to us. And, and we just think they're amazing. So, yeah, I mean, any comparison is, is a very flattering comparison. You were also in another one of television's current great sitcoms recently. You were in Motherland. Oh, I was, yeah. Playing somebody horrible and racist. Yeah, vile, yeah. Racist mum. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my favorite name. Are you drawn towards characters that aren't nice, or or uh, is it actually quite hard to do that to find yeah. that horribleness in you? Yeah, uh, no, I mean, I was asked to, uh, to audition for that, and yeah, I love that show. I think it's a great show, and it, you know, they're they're quite similar in the fact that they've worked together a, a while and and they've bonded. But I have to say, coming in, I mean, Natalie Cassidy and I were the two kind of guest artists in that in that episode, and as a group, we all really bonded. I think it was the fact that it was it was kind of still lockdown, and the nature of the episode was a school trip on, on a coach. <laughs> when I was driving to work on the first day I was thinking the driver was like oh you know yeah you're going to be on that coach all day and I'm thinking why did I agree to this <laughs> like hell. <laughs> but it was pretty much hellish but um but yeah it was like four days on a coach with a load of kids but you know that we were on a school trip but they were so lovely so generous all of them Diane Morgan they were they were all amazing and Anna Maxwell Martin is a phenomenon she's just brilliant but they were just lovely I saw Tanya uh, Moody at the the awards the other day she, they're just a lovely lovely bunch of women um and really supportive and love you know love what i do and, mm. and I, I love them but i think it's a really clever show this has been absolutely great to chat to you martha can you give us any idea of what's coming up for you either ghost related or or uh, not yeah, ghost related well, we series now so the three starts on the 9th of august we are hoping to do some more so that's where we are. But yeah, we've, we've all got our own little projects going, but we're very much hoping to be able to do more ghosts. Please do another Christmas special uh, because that one was uh, so yeah. glorious. <laughs> I, I don't know how deliberate... I mean, obviously you couldn't possibly know what everyone's Christmas was going to be like, given that, that no. it was really last minute, but it yeah. felt kind of necessary. Yeah. I do have one last question, which we've yeah. asked all of all of you ghosts gang if you had a ghost if you had to have one of those ghosts haunt your house well who would it be who would it be <laughs> i'd probably go for pat just because he's always up for a laugh and he always wants to do stuff i mean he's a little bit annoying but you can kind of tell him to shut up and he, he you know it kind of bounces off him so yeah i'd, I'd go for pat because he's always up for a game yeah <laughs> pat is lovely I, I said robin because he uh is kind of the same as having a pet that's right. But, but you didn't have to clean up after. And then actually that's kind of what the Christmas episode turned into, wasn't it? But yeah. yeah. I think Mary has her definite upsides as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. She's <laughs> so utterly daft. But yeah, uh, she yeah. Well, fingers crossed, if if Fanny Button continues to go on the upward trajectory of likable, yeah, the I next might. time I interview a ghost person, I might say Fanny. Check in next year. <laughs> <laughs>